Hey guys, several weeks ago I published a video regarding some EVE 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that I had purchased from the Lido Cala store on AliExpress and demonstrated the problems that I had with them. Now that video got quite a bit of attention on YouTube. And one of the questions that was routinely asked in the comments section is, well if I don't recommend purchasing batteries from that particular vendor, where do I recommend purchasing batteries from? So shortly after I published that video, I was actually contacted by a US company that sells these batteries. And this was Chris from the 18650 battery store. And it looks like their website primarily specializes in selling 18650 size cells. However, he did let me know that they're starting to get into lithium iron phosphate cells. And he went on to explain that they purchased their batteries directly from Eve and that there are no middlemen in between. You know, they're not buying them from like Bassin or anything like that and reselling them. So before I responded to their email, I went on their website and I purchased a set of the EVE 105 amp hour batteries myself. Because I know some of you guys say the sponsor videos, they send out different cells, whatever. You know, I haven't actually seen that occur yet, but uh, it seems to be a common belief. And then after I replied to the email and introduced myself, uh, they sent out this set of 280 amp hour batteries for review. Uh, so in this video, we're just going to build a 12 volt battery pack with each one of these uh, sets of batteries here. We'll do a capacity test to ensure they meet specifications. I'm not expecting to have any problems. He has assured me that they purchased these directly from Eve. There are no middlemen. And he's even offered me documentation to prove that if I need it. All right, so first we're gonna have a look at the 105 amp hour batteries. As you can see when I stack them up here, these things are absolutely flat. They are perfect. Um, you can see they came with the original plastic covers from Eve. Even the wrappings appear to be a little bit more professionally done. It just, it just has a very different feel when you pick it up and handle it. So taking a look at the tops of the batteries, we can see the QR codes are all there and they appear to be correct. Uh, 02Y is one of the two primary identifiers for EVE cells. Our terminal posts look good as well. There's no signs of use. Some of them do have a tick mark or two on them, but they are definitely not used batteries. Additionally, having a look at the vents, there is no indication of corrosion or anything like that. Look how perfect these things are. There is absolutely no space between them. They're beautiful. Look at that. Looking at the 280 amp hour cells, they don't fit together as cleanly as the 105 amp hours do. Uh, but there is no rocking back and forth, so I believe that's just the design of the case itself. Not that they are bloated or anything. Uh, so for the terminals of these cells, they come welded with these aluminum blocks here. And uh, this block is laser welded onto the terminal, and then it contains two sets of M6 threads. Now I did check with uh, Chris, and he let me know that these terminal blocks are actually designed by EVE, and they are welded by EVE themselves. And as we would expect, the QR code is intact and as expected. Uh, 04Q is another identifier of EVE cells. And additionally, on this one, you can see it is the LF280K variant, and it says 896 watt hours. Other than that, it is wrapped just as nicely as the other one. It's a very cleanly done job. And they've got a piece of black plastic on the bottom for extra insulation. And both sets of these batteries came packed in some pretty thick foam here, and uh, this foam is cut and sized specifically for these cells, so they were in there pretty tight, and it actually took a lot of pulling to get them out. Alright, so these are the bus bars they came with here. And this top one, I did file down and verify that it is indeed copper. So I do believe on their website that I saw these were nickel coated. And these are the screws it came with. Uh, like I said, they are fairly small screws. They are M4 size, so... So for a 12 volt battery, I need the polarity of every cell alternated. And so we've got positive, negative, positive, negative. So I've got this JBD BMS from Current Connected here. Gonna hook up these balance leads to the battery, and then I'm going to put on the second set of balance leads in case I need to plug in my display or my eye charger. All right, so there's my test setup. You can see I've got my BMS, I've got an Anderson SB175 as the power connector. Balance leads come off the BMS and they go up to the battery here. I've got the main negative and the main positive, and I've got this extra balance lead to plug in my display. Uh, these screws did tighten down nicely. There's plenty of length to them. Uh, you just want to be extra careful not to over tighten them because these are aluminum posts and like I said before they do strip out easily. Let's go ahead and plug in the display here. And we are sitting at a 4 millivolt difference currently, 5 millivolts there. Charging! Alright, so I got my usual capacity test setup connected here. That is a Batrium shunt connected to a Watchmon 5. 
Transmitting data to this display, we can see voltage, amperage, wattage, discharged amp hours, and discharged watt hours. Our test load is a 2000 watt inverter connected to a series of incandescent light bulbs. Our goal is to put a 0.2C load on this battery. On a 105 amp hour battery, that's approximately 21 or so amps. So on the display here, we can see we are just under 22 amps, probably going to approach 23. Um, so we'll leave this run until the BMS shuts down our test. Alright, so that BMS did shut down our test and we ended at 104.77 amp hours. Didn't hit that 105 mark, but not bad. Alright, so here's the battery pack built with the 280 amp hour cells. Exactly the same as the first one, just bigger cells. You can see the bus bar connections there. And then the balance lead is done the same way. I've got this smaller cable for connecting my eye charger or the display to. And I also have the individual balance leads coming off going down to the JBD BMS. Taking a look at the hardware that came with this battery, we have some bus bars very similar to the original type bus bar, uh, except these have uh, two holes on each side here for double connections to each post. I know it's probably difficult to see on camera, but I did file the corner of this one down to verify that it is copper. Uh, so I assume this is nickel plated or tin plated finish. Uh, for the actual screws, these are not grub screws like we've seen before. There is no allen head on either side. They just pretty much look like little pieces of threaded rod. Um, they are M6 size, uh, and we also have some serrated flange nuts. I've really come to like these serrated flange nuts in applications like this. You don't need to use a lock washer or anything like that. When you tighten down the nut, this serrated flange bites into the material that you're working with. Now, interestingly, I did get quite a few extra pieces of hardware. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or if these batteries ship with extra hardware. Other than the hardware, this build is exactly the same as the first test setup. Charging. All right, and just for the record, I did connect this iCharger X6 to the balance port and allow this charger to complete balancing this battery. Uh, I did the same thing with the previous battery, even though I didn't mention it when I filmed that part. Uh, so this iCharger X6 did balance out, top balance both of these battery packs. All right, so we have almost the exact same setup as the previous test. The only difference is because these are 280 amp hour cells, a 0.2 C rate puts us around 56 amps. So we're going to need a larger load to discharge this around a 0.2 C rate. So instead of the incandescent light bulbs, I'll be using the space heater on low, which should put approximately 950 watts or so on this battery, which is pretty close to 0.2 C. All right, so we're sitting around 74 amps here, which puts us at a 0.26 C rate discharge test. And that's close enough to what we need to see. Uh, so like before, we'll leave this run until this BMS shuts down our test. All right, the second test concluded at 282.4 amp hours. So we're 2.4 amp hours over the rated capacity. All right, so one thing I wanna to check too with these cells is the internal resistance after the first cycle has been completed. And to be honest, I'm not sure what the standard state of charge is for internal resistance measurements. However, uh, this test will be done at 0%. So we've got 0.05 milliohms, 0.05 milliohms, 0.05 milliohms, 0.04 milliohms. So these are all very, very close together in terms of internal resistance. Next, we're going to check the smaller 105 amp hour batteries. 0.20 milliohms, 0.20 milliohms, 0.21 milliohms, and 0 0.2, 0 0.19 milliohms. Uh, so these ones are also very, very close together in terms of internal resistance. All right, so the last thing we need to touch on is pricing. So both of these cell types are sold in packs of four. The 280 amp hour cells are the LF280K and they sell for $5.99 for the four pack with free shipping. The LF-105s or the 105 amp hour cells, $250 with free shipping. So that comes out to roughly $62.50 per cell for the 105 amp hours. Now before I ordered these LF-105s, I did place an order from Shenzhen Basin, which is where I had purchased cells from in the past. And their price for four of these LF-105s shipped was around $270, and that was using sea freight shipping, which is the slowest method shipping. Not only do we have a U.S. vendor that is selling grade A cells directly from the manufacturer, Eve, uh, the price, at least if you're buying four of them, is also beating the price of some of these suppliers on Alibaba. In addition to that, this company is giving a one-year warranty on these batteries, and they also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're unsatisfied for any reason. Uh, so after what I've seen today in terms of the sponsored batteries and the batteries I purchased myself, I see zero problems with either one of these cells, 
and I'm perfectly happy to recommend this company as a US supplier of grade A batteries. So I will leave links down in the video description if you're interested. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those as well. I always try to read and reply to as many as I can. Otherwise, please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.